Minister keep for staying with us. More alignment and realignment are unfolding as Nigeria marches to the 2023 elections. The presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, Bola Tinobu, has met with leaders of Pan Yoruba Social Cultural Organization, Afeniferi, at the residence of its national leader, Pa Ruben Fashonati, in Akure, Ondo State. At the meeting, Tinobu presented his plan of action for 2023 to the Yoruba leaders, and he could be seen bowing his head to receive blessings from the Afen Ferry leader. Some members of Afen Ferry, including the leader, Pa Ayo Adibanjo, and Secretary, Secretary General Shola Ebisheni, were not at the meeting. Adibanjo, who endorsed the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, months ago, insists it remains his choice. Let's share the story of Tinobu's visit to Fashion Rati by TVC News, Ola Awakun. The arrival of the presidential flag bearer of the APC in Akure. <laughs> Deputy Governor of Undo State and a crowd of supporters thronged the airport to welcome him. Ashiwaju Tinubu then moved around, waving to the teaming supporters. The supporters accompanied him to the residence of the leader of the Afeni Ferry, Pa Ruben Fasunoti, where he is to meet with the conscience of Yoruba nation comprising leaders of the Southwest. <laughs> Pa Fasunati prayed for Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu and wished him well as he embarks on the journey to Asurok. During the meeting with the conscience of Yoruba nation and leaders of the Southwest, Ashiwaju Tinubu was described as a true son of the Yoruba race who has the capacity to lead the nation to its promised land. Ashiwaju is quite qualified for the position of president. We are proud that he's from our race, that is in Nigeria. And we will file behind him to ensure that the military come to the special The outline security, economy, restructuring, and other areas of concern that they would require Ashiwa Jutinubu to address when he becomes president. We are convinced that by the introduction of state police, this will be. He will now give up on Nigeria. The presidential candidate of the APC thanked Parfasunoti and other Southwest leaders for their prayers, which made him win the party's primary election as he presents his manifesto to the leader of Afeni Ferry. Where will be opposition? Well, my father, I'm with Mozu and win. In the army, for this one, with your prayer, earlier on today, I will bring the trophy home. Amen. We will change the course of history. As a public officer throughout my life, I don't want my life's investment to be wasted. So I have a double reason for wishing Nigeria well. I wish you well. Uh, when you bring the trophy, I'll be here sitting by Baba. Ashiwaju Tinobu also used the historic moment to describe how President Muhammadu Buhari, governors of APC from the north, and other northern leaders proved to him that Nigeria can survive its unity and other challenges. Ola Awakon, TVC News, Akure. Jude, let's uh, quickly uh, juggle the memory of our viewers. And yes. then in 2015, the mainstream, Afeni Neferi supported former president, good luck, Ibele Jonathan. Mm. They lost their election. In 2019, the mainstream Afeni Neferi supported Atiku Abaka against Buhari. They lost their election. This is not in any way taking anything from Afeni Neferi. But mm. the way Afeni Neferi is composed now, and with that visit yesterday, you'll be sure that it's a group divided. It's a divided of group. Of course, it's While, a divided um, group. Papa Ayuadibanjo is in Lagos, Lekki, waxing lyrical, talking about his endorsement of Peter Obi on a daily basis. And this group now, 
but we, contrary to what we've been reading on the internet, we can hear per fashion until now saying that we assure Joa Wale, assure Joa Wale and everything. Mm. That means it's a sort of endorsement. My producer can even replay it so that they, they hear it again. Yeah, fashion on tea endorsed Ola Metinobu for the first time in April 2021. Mm. When over members of Swaga visited him okay. in Akure to seek his blessings. On that day, he endorsed him and said that he should come after the primaries of the party to receive blessings for the general election. So be careful of the rebuttal. Now, of the reading. what Ashwajo has done is in line with what Baba Fashion she directed him to do that after the primaries, he should come back, he should come for blessings. So there is no doubt that Baba Fashion Ranti, who handed over the leadership of Afeli Feri to uh, Baba De Banjo on account of old age. Yes, both of them are old, but Baba De Banjo uh, is, so, is more agile. agile. You know? he, 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 Baba De Banjo himself is not less than 94, mm -hmm. but God has blessed him so much physiologically that when you see him, you would not even know that he's up to 80 years. There are people like that, that uh, it has pleased God to bless in that way. They are so strong, you know, so he's healthier, he's, he's looking healthier and doesn't appear to have aged rapidly. So Baba Fashion Ranti considered leadership. leadership to him of on account stress. of, yes, you know, because at that age, he can't function effectively anymore, you know, uh, in that position. So, Obi, what the Ashwa, what Ashwa Tinumbu and his people have done, the moment Baba Adebanjo uh, began to say that Aferi Feri has endorsed Obi, they continue to repeat it. Within the Bola Ahmed Tinumbu um, house of strategists, they were already making up their minds to get these guys to real, to get people to realize that Afeni Ferre does not belong to Baba Adebanjo alone, and that the view of Baba Adebanjo mm -hmm. does not equate to the view mm -hmm. of the whole. Mm -hmm. Does not equate even to the view of the whole. I'm still talking about Afeni mm -hmm. Ferre now. Mm -hmm. So this is what we have seen. We've seen leaders, other leaders show up there. Members of our Ferry, Ferry. Mm. by being at that yeah. event, yeah, Chief Olufa by supporting, I, like Chief Olufa is a then very strong. You cannot say that mm. oh, because Abadeba just said he does not support him. That means everybody in no, Ferry, no, Ferry. Ferry. I think it is that notion, that notion, that this meeting effectively combusted. You can't go around now and say oh, the whole of our Ferry. If they have queued behind Obi, people will remind you of what happened uh, in Akure, where even Baba Fashoron, he laid his hands on his head and prayed for him. Mm. The way you bless your child, mm. you know, when your child is leaving, you mm. maybe your daughter getting married, you know, the way you bless, bless her, because even marriage itself uh, is a very tricky phase of life. Yeah. Uh -huh. So anybody who is married will know that it's a tricky mm. phase of life, in, in life's journey. So this is the thing. They had always wanted to do something about that notion. Mm. They have succeeded now. Because frankly, nobody expected I saw you to go to this place to say he's going to present his manifesto. Mm. But he knows what he's doing. His minders know what they are doing. That once they are able to do this, they found a way to make it look like Baba Adebanjo is isolated, his views represent what they are, his own views, and not the, entire, the views of the entire uh, Fede Fede, uh, uh, leadership. GKB, <laughs> talking about the Fede Fede over time, yeah. looking at the politics, looking at the dynamics, 
it has, you know, they've never had it, uh, um, in a house in order since, let me say, the death of Chief, um, uh, what's the name of? Uh, Ibrahim Adesoya. Even when they before, used to meet in Jebubo and everything, a papa and everything, but yeah. after the death of uh, Ibrahim Adesan, effectively, yeah. Afeni Ferry wasn't speaking with one voice again. Well, you have to understand that the chism, if one can call it that, started with the meeting in Ibadan to select the presidential candidates for the age, mm. which is for Lu Falai. Mm. At Dirubans Hotel. Uh, at Dirubans. Mm. And Bolaike, while he traveled. To, Put a trailer through the yes, and so that's the beginning of the season. Uh, recently, I was told that Ashwaju supported uh, Chief Olufala at that time. Mm. Recently, I think what really happened is the fact that there was a, a desire that, of course, was broken by other regions, not the southwest, to do a collective bargaining, if you can call it that, to present a southern candidate. Remember the meetings that they all held with the Oanese, yes. with the Middle mm -hmm. Belt Forum, and all that. And then the the FNF decided to be the main champion of what they consider to be inequality or whatever they call it when it comes to the South. It's their rights, they have the prerogative. But like you stated, the Yoruba race is about 40, 50 million strong with a voting population of about 25, 30 million. We've done, there's something your boys will call Ubo Onsu, that could be Kono. Not even when Awolowo was alive. There yes. will be people who will resist mm -hmm. and go the other way. Mm -hmm. uh, Paolo never forced anybody to follow a thorough path. You present his case, he give you the four cardinal programs and give you the choice of what to do. And for a social cultural group, uh, going deep into politics like this is uh, really not the best. But I understand where they are coming from. But like you said, two things happened yesterday. One of them is the fact that the professionality decided to host Ashwa Jubala in Etimogu. And that one is done. The executive of Afrika decided that they are going to support Obi. What is left now is for the Yoruba nation, for Yoruba people, for Yoruba ethnic nationality, whatever they call them us now, to now decide which way they are going. And I'm sure yesterday I've really shown that the morning will mark the day. And, and uh, unsurprisingly, Baba Adebanjo came out to say, well, Pastor Matthew was uh, um, speaking to himself that as far as they are concerned, he already endorsed the um, uh, will be of the Labour Party in line with uh, uh, the desire for justice and equity. Um, are you not are you not surprised that with what JKB even said, mm. even Oanez and Digbo, mm. they've it, till now avoided the pressure to endorse any candidate. Even Arewa that just finished that this thing, they've not endorsed anybody. Why the rush for February to endorse? Only Baba only Baba. Um, I can answer that. No, I think the, the history <coughs> of the relationship between Afeni Ferry and uh, Ebola Metimungu since 1983 will be a factor that we can look at to decide whether this is what is happening. Because they've always been in the camp that I should have used not since 2003. So I don't think anybody, a student of Nigerian political history, will be surprised. At the position taken by the African very executive and the majority members of what the Yorubans will decide coming from, come February. I think that's the fundamental issue we have to look at here. They have the right to do whatever, like Baba Adeba just said, it's the fundamental right of Baba Fashionati to, to let Ashwaju come and be blessed. It's also the fundamental right of the African very executive to do whatever they think they want to endorse. And like you noticed, they've been endorsed people in the last three, four, five, six, a little circle. That bears no reward, at least not to the level that they expected as a group. I agree that this is a schism, but this is a schism that our elders will find a way around going forward. I think um, there is a lot of um, um, issues around personality clashes and Ego. Mm. 
that, mm. oh, I don't like this person, this person offended me, therefore, going forward, I won't be his man. Because we are seeing, we are seeing. Sorry, sorry uh, to cut you, please. The, my brother released something yesterday for a ferry ferry. And the opening line was basically about the antecedents or lack of it. And I said, look at what he wrote and what Baba Adiba just said. And you can compare, just to buttress what you said about ego and things like that. Oh, this if, agreement. This even agreement. the man himself said he has the rights. The, the truth is, I, as I always say, um, I do not begrudge them for, is there right? for endorsing Obi. Those of them who have endorsed Obi. One thing is clear. It's not every one of them that um, agree with that decision to endorse Obi. Just as every one of them cannot endorse um, the position of Baba Pasolonti, or how is his name pronounced? Pasolonti. Uh -huh. But at the end of the day, it is not, it is the Nigerian people that will determine who their next president is. Majority of Nigerians. Groups like Afer Inferi and, and the rest of them, they can endorse anybody. Oh. But candidates, my advice to candidates is to stay focused. Keep your eyes on the ball. Let your strategy be tight. And know that it is the overwhelming majority of Nigerians that you need to win this election. Mm. Some people in a hall, maybe three, four, five, seven, eight, cannot determine who becomes Nigeria's next president. Not, not in 2020. Nigerians, mm. they are power lies in their roots. Mm. They are the ones who will determine. Uh, the, you can hate Bola Metinubu as much as you want. If the Nigerian people, the majority of the Nigerian people say, this is who we want, and they decide to vote for him, there's nothing you can do about it. You may not like Obi's face, but if the voters say, ah, it is Obi that must be our next president, must ah, the he's the one who represents change, it, it goes on to win. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. That is, we here, are just we are expressing our opinion about um, who and who has gone to who in the desire to win. The candidate wants to win the election, and he will do whatever he thinks he has to do to win the election. All right. Thank you for staying with us. We're still in that season of endorsements yes. and um, groups, political parties, um, individual professional business, bodies. Business, they will uh, invite all these presidential candidates, just like when. Uh, the candidate of the All Progressive Congress was uh, accused to have boycotted the Nigerian Bar Association meeting uh, as at that time mm -hmm. in, in Lagos. But when he got to you know some other areas, mm -hmm. they showed up. Yeah, you now have to, you have to pick your we, a lot of these candidates they know where the votes are, they know where to go to. So some invitation they will turn it down, some invitation they will attend. Did they? It's yes. a very busy season for them. Yes, uh, especially for the, for the likes of Peter Obi, Ashwa be, Jubala, you have to be strategic, and um, you have to be strategic in um, looking for votes. Uh, despite the fact that many Christians are not happy that a Christian was not chosen as um, a vice presidential candidate um, to Ashwa but you will see that he has not left the Christian community alone. He's been meeting them. He, he does not want to give up the votes, the quantum of votes from the Christian community. And so he's still meeting different Christian groups. And I've seen some Christian groups endorse him. Like the... Yes. Uh, some the Christian groups. Of Lagos that I've, I've listened to his... They've endorsed him. And, yes. Oh, even, even, that some, even some young Christians and all that. And uh, remember even what um, um, uh, Reverend Father Kuka said. The other day, yes, yes, yes. That look that he doesn't think that Christians mm. should be bothered about uh, a Muslim Muslim ticket. You know, he continues to tell the Christians that look, I cannot Islamize Nigeria. It's not possible. My wife is a pastor, the Redeemed Church. 
and near the bed lamps of our bed, we have the Quran. There are two lamps to the bed. You have the Quran on this side, you have the Bible on the other side. And according to Ashwaju, both positions have never changed. Which means you are a Muslim, you are a Muslim, you are a Christian, we both respect each other's uh, spirit. And as far as it's concerned, in the affairs of the nation, we must ensure that religion does not mortally divide us. Because that will have grave implications. So the point that I'm making is that he knows that by not choosing a Christian as his deputy, many Christians are not happy. But in spite of that, he is still going after the Christian vote. He is still campaigning to them. He's not giving up. What some of them hate to hear is to say that, oh, um, I, I chose him based on uh, I chose, um, the fact that I saw him as the best. They don't want to hear that. Because you can't tell them that that is the best that you can have. But you can actually say that in the context of this election, I found him the most appropriate. Because I've had a Christian leader who said, if he says that to us, we will understand. But he should not give the impression that it's the best, that they are convinced that there are other people who are just as good, who are Christians, or, or if not even better. But when you say in the context of the election, you found them the most appropriate. That means the candidate wants to win, and he thinks that that is the person who can best guarantee victory for him. So it's a, a, a political decision in the real sense of the word. It has nothing to do with spiritual uh, consideration. These candidates, do we come up with so many other strategies to win the hearts of the electorate? Yeah. You have to understand we are in the season, so things like this are bound to happen. But what I found most interesting is the level of promises that are being made. And that to me is fundamental. I wish that we got to a point in our democratic journey where we can look back at what candidates promised and what they've been able to deliver. That will be the future, not whether it's a Christian or a Muslim. Because ultimately, if the roads are good, everybody will ply that road. If the trains are working, everybody will use that road. If the economy is fantastic, everybody will make money in that economy. I know we're not there yet. We're still primordial in that sense of ethnicity and religion. But I think going forward, what I think will happen next is the fact that we move to a sphere where religion will not play a major part. Right now, I cannot tell you that that's true. Because a lot of people religion are using and ethnicity. A lot of people are using ethnicity now and masquerading it as patriotism. That is the danger to me. Because somebody who is obviously a partisan, because the candidate is XYZ, you are not telling other people that they don't have that right. Mm. And they are now tribal. You are in your heart. It's actually an, an ethnic agenda. Yeah, you know you exactly what you are planning. Even Steve Wonder can see what the agenda is. <laughs> and you keep pretending that your position is patriotic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mine uh, is patriotic. <laughs> and that's the danger mm. that we face as a nation today. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your advice. Thanks for always being there.